Hi there, and this is section 10.6, and in this section we're going to solve quadratic equations by using a formula that's called the quadratic formula. We are on page 671 right now, all right? Before we talk about this new method, and this is another method that we can use to solve a quadratic, I'd like to walk through the methods we've already learned and talk about each of their strengths and weaknesses. The first method that you've learned to solve a quadratic was factoring. Okay, and factoring we learned back in chapter 9. We spent a whole chapter basically on factoring and solving equations, quadratic equations by factoring. I personally feel like factoring is the number one thing I always look to do because if you're good at your mental math, this I'd say is the easiest way to solve a quadratic if it's a problem that's, as you see here, easy to factor. All right. Um, from there, the graphing method. Remember, we could, and we learned this earlier in this chapter back in section 10.4, I believe. Let me just double check. I'm paging in my book. Um, actually, I'm, I misspoke. 10.3. In section 10.3, I'll just write it here, we solved by graphing. You were able to use your calculator. You did not have to show any work. Um, I'm, I'm sure you all like that. Okay. The great thing about this is this is also a super easy method. Um, no work required. Just put it in your calculator. See where the parabola crosses the x-axis, and you can use your table to help you find the solutions. Okay. Here's the bad about this method. Okay, and I'm going to underline it in red. If you need exact answers, remember, this method in many cases could only give you estimates. So if you are in Mr. Keller's class or uh, Ms. Bossack's class or you're in um, another class, some point Mr. Baker's physics class or whatever, and you're working with a quadratic and you need an exact result, uh, just stick it in your calculator and making a table isn't going to get you exact. It's going to get you rounded results. So it's important to know this is only good if, you, if, if rounding the answers are okay. The third method, we just learned this method in section 10.5, um, 10.4 uh, and 10.5, we were using square roots. Now remember, using square roots is very good if we don't have a B value. If we do have a B value, as we just learned in section 10.5, we can complete the square and then be able to use square roots again. Okay? So every one of these methods have good points about them and bad points. Like factoring has a bad point. If you can't factor the quadratic, factoring won't help you solve it. All right? So factoring even has um, some down points to it. All right. This next method the quadratic formula. Okay? This method, again, has some good points and some bad points. The good point is it works for anything. I normally use this method. When I was your age, I learned that if factoring isn't an easy option, or if I, had, if I was going to try to use square roots involving completing the square, remember, if I got to go through that process of completing the square that we learned in section 10.5, I'm going to take a couple minutes anyway fiddling around with that process. If I got to that, I normally just went to the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, the strength of it, and maybe I should write this down, the strength of the quadratic formula, boy, it would be helpful if I could spell here, strength of the quadratic formula is it works for all quadratics. It doesn't matter what kind of quadratic you have, if it's factorable, um, and so on. It works for all quadratics, okay? The downside of the quadratic formula, and I'll write it up here, the downside is it's probably going to equal you two minutes of work, period, okay? You got to work through it. It's going to take you a couple minutes, so it will give you the correct answer, but it's a guaranteed going to take you at least 60 seconds to two minutes to work it out. That's the bad thing. You know, when you factor, there are some factoring problems that might take you 15 seconds and you're done. Quadratic formula is always going to be about a two-minute process, all right? First of all, this is the quadratic formula. 
it's going to look imposing at first. You will, you will remember this as we use it each day. It's something you need to remember. This is not something you need to remember just for today. You'll use it in geometry class. You'll use it in Algebra 2. This is one of those things you're going to have to remember. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right. So from there, how does it work? What do we do to get this to work? Well, there's a couple steps we've got to take before we use it. First of all, before we try using this formula, we have to make sure that the quadratic we're working on is in standard form. If it's not written in proper order of degree, descending order of degree, like you learned at the beginning of Chapter 9, if we haven't simplified things, um, we have to make sure the quadratic is written out in standard form and equal to zero. That's step one. Got to make sure that's the case. All right. Let's take a look at a sample problem like number six in the book. As you notice, this is written in standard form in descending order of degree. Here's all you have to do. A right now you can see is one. You can see B is three and you can see C is one. You just take A, 3, and 1, and you plug in 1 wherever you see an A, you plug in 3 wherever you see a B, and you replace C with 1 wherever you see a C. So I'm doing that. Anywhere I saw B, I replaced it with 3. So here and here. Anywhere I saw A, I replaced it with 1, and anywhere I saw C, I replaced it with 1. And now I've got to calculate this out. Now, this first one I'm just going to do up here in my head. I would always recommend figuring out what's underneath the square root. Actually, what's underneath the square root has a name. It's called the discriminant, and we'll talk about that more in our next video. What's underneath the square root, I always would recommend figuring this out first. So 3 squared is 9. 9 minus, well, 4 times 1 times 1 is 4. 9 minus 4 gets me to 5. So this works out into negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5, all divided by 2. And we can put that in our calculator. I'll show you that in a minute. When people screw this up each year, there's three major reasons that people screw up these problems. Okay? The first major reason is they didn't make sure the equation is in standard form, so their A, B, and C values aren't correct. You must make sure that the equation you start with is properly written in standard form or your A, B, and C values won't be right. Here's a sec second reason. I've had people take the test and they don't even have the formula down right. They forgot the formula, they forgot the square term, they, you know, just screwed things up. They didn't remember the formula, they didn't take the time to learn it. So that's the second major thing. And then this one is probably the biggest of the three. I have people that every year, it's, it's really, I feel bad for them. They know the formula. They plugged everything in the right places, and they didn't type it in their calculator correctly. If you type this in your calculator incorrect, of course, your calculator is not going to give you the correct response. Okay? So let's take a look at the problem I just did. Negative 3 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2, you can see... I'm using parentheses around the negative 3 plus square root of 5. I've got to make sure I tell my calculator, and maybe I should do this in black, take, take negative 3 plus square root of 5 on top, add those together first, and then divide by 2 at the end. If you don't use parentheses around the entire numerator when you put this in your calculator, your calculator, remember, will do proper order. If you just type it in like this, I'm not going to put the minus right now. If you just type it in in this way and then divide by 2A, the calculator is going to incorrectly divide these two first and then add that on to negative B. That's not what you want. You want the entire numerator added together or subtracted and then divide that whole thing by 2A. You might want to put this problem, in fact, you might want to pause the video, take this, and enter it in your calculator twice, one with addition, one with subtraction, 
and make sure you are actually getting these two values. I'm circling them in yellow. These are the two proper responses that you get for this equation. Stop the video and plug those in and try it. Okay, let's do another question. And this question shows the strengths and great weakness of the quadratic formula. Okay, I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve this so I can see A is 1. And by the way, I'm going to time myself. Um, and I, I'm going to do that right now. This is going to be kind of neat. I've never done this before. I'm going to use a timer. And I'm just going to do that and start it up. Good. Okay, so A is 1. B is negative 7. And C is 12. And I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So here's the quadratic formula. Write it out real quick. And I have the opposite of negative 7, which is 7, plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4ac all over 2 times 1. I think I can actually do this in my head. You can use your calculator. I have 7 plus or minus, well, negative 7 squared is 49. Uh, minus uh, 4 times 1 times 12 is 48, and I have 2 times 1 is 2. So I get 7 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2, which is the same as 7 plus or minus 1 over 2. So I'm going to get two responses. I'm going to get 7 plus 1 over 2, and I'm going to get 7 minus 1 over 2, and it looks like I'm getting, this is 8 over 2, which is 4, and I'm getting 6 over 2, which is 3, and I can stop. You can see that process. Now, I did not use a calculator. I'm assuming you would in most cases. It took me, and I told you it'd take at least a minute, it took me a minute, 20 seconds to figure that out. All right. Now, let's go back to this problem. Think about factoring for a minute. What times what's 12 but adds up to negative 7? And I'm sure many of you watching this video would be like, well, heck, Mr. Lamance, that's easy. 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 plus 3 is a 7. So if I just did x minus 4 and x minus 3, that's the correct factorization. Well, do you realize that you would have gotten 4 and 3 for your solutions probably in about 20 seconds? Okay, so again, if you can factor, that can be by far the quickest method to solving a quadratic. If you use the quadratic formula every time, it will always give you the correct answer, but you're always going to have that one to two minutes of work on every single problem. And remember, when we talk about things like the ACT test, things that are timed, we don't want to automatically have to burn two minutes for every single problem because we didn't bother to learn how to factor or we didn't learn how to use square roots to solve an equation because actually those two methods, I would say of all the methods that we talked about here, that's why and you might think, why would the book teach factoring first? Well, think about it. If factoring was the worst method, do you think the book would teach that first? Okay. I would say factoring is the number one method because e if it's easy to factor, that's by far the fastest. You know, again, graphing is a great method if you don't need exact answers and if you're not required to show work. If you're in Mr. Keller's class, and I know he demands work, if he says, I want the answer and I want the work, uh, just stick it in your calculator and putting answers down, he's not going to be real good about that. He's going to want to know why you got those answers. And just saying, why well, put it in my calculator isn't going to be enough justification. He'll want to see the work. Okay, so again, if no work's required, this is great. If it's not, if exact, it does not have to be exact, this is great. If work is required, then this isn't very good. Square roots, um, that's okay, especially if there's no B value. If you've got to complete the square, then you're going to spend as much time as you did on the quadratic formula anyway. So again, every one of these have a strength. Every one of these methods have a weakness. Anyway, that's the quadratic formula. 
I'm going to stop the video here. If you have other questions, obviously we will go through those in class tomorrow.